Welcome back to The Talking Hedge. I'm Josh Kincaid, Capital Markets Analyst and host of your Cannabis Business Podcast. Today, we're going to take a look at a report from Brightfield Group on innovations in cannabis beverages. Obviously, during this pandemic, edibles have increased rapidly. Maybe it's not obvious to you. It is with the data. So we can explore some of the fastest growing subcategories of cannabis beverages and the products behind the rapid growth. Elixirs are taking a a cue from alcoholic beverages, maybe, or even back in the day with some of the colas that were elixirs. Some of these elixirs are barrel aged, kind of like a cask. Some companies are trying to emulate cocktails with a a mocktail lemonade. And maybe that'll be normalized at some point. It's still, still too soon for me, though. Looking at THC drinks that look a little bit more like soda. Some of these sodas are as low as 10 milligrams and as high as 100 milligrams as a limit for most of the regulated states. But the price point is a little bit too high. And a lot of these companies are going for plastic. So you don't really see any of the major beer companies put their product in plastic. So you got to think about that. Leaching is a huge issue. A lot of these cannabis companies haven't really thought about that too deep, but canning requires special equipment. And so bottling is a lot easier. So I would go with glass or aluminum plastic. Definitely stay away from even with the elixirs. Moving on to medicinal cannabis drinks. Medicinal drinks are more of like the syrups, kind of an elixir, uh, but more potent, I guess. Even though a lot of them are still capped at 100, you still see a lot of the medical products for syrups at 1,000 or 5,000 milligrams. I'd also expect to see a lot more medical drinks that have, you know, high terpene profiles. Terpenes are essentially kind of the steering wheel to get you to the direction you want where the percentage of CBD or THC is really just how fast it's going to get you there. So terpenes are incredibly important. Taking a look at those. There's other opportunities for innovation. So the occasional disruptive product, which doesn't clearly fall into one of the other categories. Some companies are having like tea, for example, infused bottles with tea bags. Other products, they haven't seen significant growth recently. Something like a horchata packet that can be mixed in any drink, add a little cinnamon twist. I haven't seen a whole lot of powdered sell very well. I think there's an opportunity for that when the market matures, but people want grab and go. They also want something affordable. So if you aren't able to produce at 10 to 15 cents per milligram, you're not going to have the volume necessary to stay in business. We've seen a lot of these beverage companies go out of business because they don't have the volume necessary at $20 a pop. It doesn't work. People do spend money, seven, $8 for coffee every single day. Yes. But that means that these beverage companies need to reduce their, their cost of goods sold by two thirds. So good luck on reducing that 60% in the meantime which is kind of why it's a work in progress in Canada. So 2.0 sales in Canada, that's the addition of like extracts and um, beverages and edibles that took place in October with the first products really hitting the shelves January of 2020. It's been a pretty slow rollout and some of the companies aren't allowing uh, products like vapes, for example. One of the first really big brands to get a lot of capital uh, was with Constellation Brands putting in almost $5 billion with Canopy. Molson, Molson Coors, they came in and partnered with Hexo as well. And so you have Anheuser-Busch partnering with Tilray. A um, lot of money going in there, but really nothing happening. I think a lot of these big beverage brands are looking at reduced sales, especially in already regulated marketplaces. You're seeing a decrease in opioid and alcohol use in places like Colorado, Washington, Oregon, California. Obviously, opioid use is still relevant and way too high, but it has been reduced as well as drunk driving, uh, depending on who you ask. But we are seeing a lot of companies come in and buying up cannabis Uh, beverages, especially from alcohol industry. And that is on the hopes of, you know, supplementing their their reduced sales. So there's some uh, healthier options like teas that they're hoping to get into, but really it's about the the hard seltzer style, something that's a little bit uh, less sugary or uh, just a better option. So they're kind of doubling down, they're hedging on their bets, they're noticing that sales are decreasing in their traditional categories and trying to go after cannabis. So there's a lot more companies um, realizing that with the printing of trillions of dollars, it's it's going to result in maybe faster 
legalization at the federal level, especially when Mexico legalizes, the U.S. is going to have to legalize. And I think with that, Leading up to this election, we're seeing a lot of companies reach out and gobble up cannabis. So they know something we don't. That's obvious with their lobbyists. They're hearing something and they're making those decisions. It also has to go with that inverse relationship with sin stocks that we've been mentioning, where during an economic depression, recession, correction, sin stocks have that inverse relationship. So maybe they're preparing for that. Maybe they know something we don't with legalization. Either way, they're putting their money uh, where their mouth is. And so actually they're keeping quiet about it. So I, um, that's just one more validation, one more uh, spot where you can find out what the money's doing, follow the money. With all of these companies vying for that $140 million Canadian market uh, annually, they obviously are jumping the gun, trying to get it before the ball drops. So just got to come back to the talking hedge and find out. With that, we're going to roll this one up. I'm Josh Kincaid. This is the talking hedge. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe or don't. And I'm out. Don't forget to smash that like button on your way out and check out these other videos that we've got.